The aorta is the largest vessel in the body. It starts right at the top of the heart where the left ventricle and the aorta meet. And we talk about the aorta in segments because each segment of the aorta acts a little bit differently. The first section of the aorta is called the aortic root. And although it's the shortest bit of aorta, it's the most complex because within the aortic root lies the valve and the coronary arteries, which is how the heart brings blood flow back to itself. The next section of the aorta is the ascending aorta, and it runs right here in the front of our chest behind the sternum, and it carries the blood flow up. Then the aorta runs from the front of your chest to the back of your chest as it runs right under the base of your neck. And that portion of the aorta is referred to as the arch because that's the way it's shaped. And from the aortic arch come the blood vessels that carry blood flow to the brain and the arms. Typically there's three of those blood vessels, but in some people there's two, in some people there's four, but they all carry the blood flow up. After the aortic arch in the back of our chest, we refer to the aortic section or segment as the descending aorta and it carries blood flow downwards to the lower parts of the body. As that descending aorta passes through the diaphragm around the level of our ribs, it then becomes the abdominal aorta and the section in between that area is sometimes called the thoraco-abdominal aorta or the bit of the aorta in the chest and the belly. Once the aorta goes into the abdomen, it gives off blood vessels that go to our liver and spleen our intestines, our kidneys, and then around the level of your belly button, the aorta ends and branches into the arteries that go down to the pelvis and the legs, also known as the iliac and femoral arteries. The normal size of the aorta is about two and a half or three centimeters or maybe an inch, inch and a half, which is about the size of a drain pipe under your sink. It's a huge blood vessel. And again, these different segments of the aorta are important to understand because each section of the aorta is affected by slightly different disease processes. And depending on which portion of the aorta that's affected or if multiple portions of the aorta are affected by any disease process, our treatment uh, approach will also be different. Coarctation of the aorta. Coarctation of the aorta refers to a narrowing of the main blood vessel carrying oxygen rich blood from the heart to the body. The vessels before the coarctation see higher blood pressure than those after. Coarctation can sometimes be detected by differences in the blood pressure in the arms and legs. The degree of the narrowing determines how soon intervention is needed. Severe coarctation of the aorta is often found in the first few weeks of life. However, a less severe coarctation may go undiscovered for years.
The aorta is the largest artery in your body. Your heart pumps fresh oxygenated blood through your aorta to deliver oxygen and nutrients to all your organs and tissues. Your aorta is divided into two main sections, the thoracic aorta and the abdominal aorta. The thoracic aorta has four parts, the aortic root, ascending aorta, aortic arch, and descending aorta. The wall of your aorta is composed of three layers that give it strength. The intima, or inner layer, the media, or middle layer, and the adventitia, or outer layer. The elastic, muscular media prevents your blood pressure from rupturing the wall. Over time, degenerative disease may cause the media layer to break down, weakening the wall of your aorta. Blood pumping against the weakened area may cause it to bulge outward like a balloon. Or it may re-enter the aorta through another tear in the intima. Over time, a blood clot may form in the false channel. An aortic dissection may be classified according to its location and duration of symptoms. In the Stanford system, if you have an aortic dissection in your ascending aorta, it is called a type A dissection. All other dissections are called type B. If your symptoms have lasted less than two weeks, you have an acute dissection. It can be rapidly fatal and requires immediate medical attention. If your symptoms have persisted for two weeks or longer, you have a chronic dissection. Your doctor will monitor it closely for changes. For more information, please contact the Center for Aortic Disease at the NYU Langone Medical Center. The aorta, blood pumping against the weakened area, may cause it to bulge outward like a balloon. When this condition occurs in your chest, it is called a thoracic aortic aneurysm. These aneurysms may occur in one of several places, including the aortic root, the ascending aorta, or the descending aorta. Most thoracic aneurysms have no symptoms. However, when they reach larger sizes, various symptoms may appear, depending on the severity and location of the aneurysm. Symptoms of stable thoracic aneurysms may include shortness of breath, chest, back, or abdominal pain, difficulty swallowing, and hoarseness. If the aneurysm ruptures or dissects, more dramatic symptoms will appear, including a ripping sensation in the chest, severe pain in the back between the shoulder blades, dizziness, and difficulty walking and speaking. If you have these symptoms, you should seek immediate medical attention, as this condition is life-threatening. Blood pumping against weakened aortic walls can lead to another life-threatening condition, called aortic dissection, which may or may not occur within an aneurysm. Most commonly, aortic dissection begins with damage to the intima layer. Blood moves through the break in the intima, separating it from the media, causing bleeding inside the wall of your aorta. As a result, a flap, called a septum, forms between the true aortic channel and the false channel. From here, the blood may break through the outer layer of the aortic wall, causing an immediate life-threatening condition or it may re-enter the aorta through another tear in the intima. Over time, a blood clot may form in the false channel. 
An aortic dissection may be classified according to its location and duration of symptoms. The most common symptom of thoracic aortic dissection is sharp or stabbing chest pain, usually sudden and severe. If you have a type A dissection, you're most likely to feel pain in your chest. If you have a type B dissection, you're more likely to feel pain in your back than your chest. If you have these symptoms, you should seek immediate medical attention, as this condition can be life-threatening.